Hey, this is Brother Clinton. Welcome to my living room. Come on in, have a seat. There's stuff in the fridge if you want. Uh, there's cold drinks in there. There's milk, there's juice, there's water. Make yourself at home. Um, I know that it's not for a man of God to be silly. Uh, and so I'm not going to be silly. But I am feeling a little bit rowdy right now. And don't even try to stop me, okay? Because when I get like this, you, you can't stop me. I'm, I'm out of control. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a video about how not to preach the gospel, the gospel of Christ. And the reason I'm doing it is because it just occurred to me as I was driving home that there are so many different ministries and churches and evangelists and pastors out there who are entertainers and teaching nothing but lies and deception. And 99% of the people in this country or in this world that call themselves Christians are totally deceived by these wolves in sheep's clothing. And so I just want to share some of these things with you. And it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek. It's not total silliness, but it's, it's actually very serious. But I just kind of want to make fun of it a little bit, if that's okay with you. If that's all right with you. If, if not, then write me and let me know. Okay. But don't try to stop me now because I'm, I'm out of control. I've just completely lost it. So... Uh, here are some ways not to preach the gospel. First of all, uh, many try to preach the gospel by saying, well, Jesus said in the Revelation, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man come in to me, I will open. And if you open the door to me, I'll come into him and sup with him and he with me. So Jesus, friends, uh, Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. And the Bible says that if you'll just open the door of your heart and let Jesus in and invite him in to be your Lord and Savior, that he will save you from all your sins and that he will have a relationship with you and he will love you and take you to heaven. My friends, that is not the gospel of Christ. Okay, it's not anywhere in the scripture. The verse of scripture that these people are misquoting to people is a verse, Is it's a part of a sentence that was and in a letter that Jesus gave to John to give to the church, the church of the Laodiceans. The Laodiceans are the people of God's wrath. They are the church of Jesus Christ who has turned from him and become worldly and f filled with the, the desires and lusts of this world. They, are they think that they're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And they know not that they're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. This letter was written to the church. It was not written to the world. And so we cannot take a, a little clause out of a letter that was written to the church and bring it to a bunch of sinners who are not saved and tell them that if they just open the door of their heart, that Jesus will come in and save them. That's ridiculous. Uh, but unfortunately, most people who don't know the Bible sit in these things that they call churches, and they listen to these liars tell them this, and they believe it. Let's see what else. Um, God is love. The Bible does say that God is love. But here's another way not to preach the gospel. My friend, do you know that God loves you? Do you know that even though you're a sinner, even though you're a thief or a sodomite or an adulterer or a murderer, do you know that God loves you? Do you know that God is on his throne weeping and crying because he's waiting for you to come to him and to confess your sins to him? And so he can love you, so he can wrap his arms around you. Because God just desires to wrap his arms around you, and it makes him so sad that you're sinning. God loves you. Come to God. Let him love you. That's garbage. That's not what the Bible teaches at all. Now, the Bible does say that God is love. Sure, God is love. But the Bible does not say that God loves sinners. Okay? There's, there's this popular saying in the churches, Oh, God loves the sinner but hates the sin. Will somebody please show me that in the scripture? It's not there. It's just not there. God is angry with the sinners every day. And if he doesn't turn from his evil ways, God says he will wet his sword. And he has prepared the instruments of death against those who rebel against him. So God is not in, on his throne in heaven weeping over sinners and their sins. But God is love. And because he is love, he has made a way for sinners to come to him. And that way is not, um, well, God loves you. So just come to him. And, and uh, somebody will say, oh, I didn't come to God because I fear him. I came to him because I love him. Those people have no idea who Jesus Christ is. Let me tell you something. The love of God brings salvation to men. But it is the fear of God that brings men to salvation. And if you disagree with that, then you disagree with the scripture. Okay? 
Because the Bible says in the very middle of the whole Bible, this is the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments. In the book of Ecclesiastes. That's the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments. Now I know the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And indeed, that's the first and greatest commandment. But it is the fear of God that brings men to salvation. Because if men didn't fear God, then they wouldn't come to him to be saved. Because what is there to be saved from? The thing that we need to be saved from is the wrath of God. That's something that you should be afraid of. So those people out there that are saying, oh, I don't fear God, I love him, they have no idea who he is. And if you have said that, you have no idea who he is. And I encourage you, I implore you to read the scripture and find out who Jesus Christ is. So that's another way not to preach the gospel. Oh, God loves you. Just come to God because he loves you. And he's just waiting to love on you. Oh, get away from me with that. Praise the Lord. Here's another thing. Uh, there are so many in the, in the denominational churches today who are entertainers and they'll pick up the they'll stand in the pulpit and they'll read their bible and, and they, they have the costume on and and they're they're usually like this um for the wages of sin uh, you got to say uh every time you say a syllable for the wages of, of sin uh, is death uh, uh. but the gift uh, of god now you can't just say god you have to draw it out you just have to say god but the gift of God uh, is eternal life uh, through Jesus Christ, uh, our Lord. Uh, give him praise and glory. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor and say, give him praise and glory. What kind of foolishness is that? Was there ever a man of God who spoke that way? Did Jesus speak that way? Did his apostles speak that way? No. You see, those people are entertainers. They go to school, seminary, to learn how to entertain people. And then they go out and they buy a business and they register it with the government and they call it a church, whether they call it a Presbyterian or a Lutheran or a Baptist or a Catholic or a Pentecostal or an Apostolic or whatever they might call it. It's a business. It's, it's registered with the government. It's a 503C organization. And these people are entertainers and they use the word of God to a certain degree and then they stand in the pulpit and they entertain you. And if they don't entertain you well, then you're not going to come back. And if you don't come back, then you won't put any money in the collection plate. And if you don't put any money in the collection plate, then they won't be able to pay for that big ridiculous building that God never told them to build, which they're indebted to, which is the reason why they have to continually entertain you instead of telling you the truth. Those people are not preaching the gospel of Christ to you. Those people are tickling your ears, entertaining you. And if that's what you want, then that's what you've got and that's what you pay for. So these are some ways not to preach the gospel. Here is the way that the gospel of Christ is preached. The apostles went forth after Jesus' resurrection and preached that he's risen from the dead. Now, notice another thing. They didn't preach that he was crucified. You don't have to go around and preach to people that Jesus was crucified. Everybody knows that he was crucified, and that's not the gospel. Okay? A man dying on a cross is not a miracle. A man being raised from the dead, incorruptible, who can never, ever die again, that is the miracle. The man who raised himself from the dead was innocent when he died, and the fact that he was innocent when he died is manifest by the fact that he raised him, him his own body from the dead on the third day, just like he said that he would, and ascended into heaven of, uh, in front of over 500 people. And to this day, people are getting filled with his spirit and baptized in his name, and lives are being changed because he has risen from the dead. That's the gospel, and that's what the apostles preached. They preached the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He has risen from the dead. He is the almighty God who has come in the flesh, risen from the dead. And if you will repent, turn from your sins, because his wrath is coming, because he's coming to establish his kingdom in the earth, he is coming back with a sword and with rebukes of flames of fire. And if you are found on, in, in rebellion against him, you will be found at the point of his sword but if you will repent from your sins and be baptized in the name of jesus christ for the remission of your sins he will fill you with the gift of the holy ghost which is his own spirit and you'll be filled with power and speak with other tongues just like it was written in the old testament that would happen and it's written in the new testament that it did come to pass 
And that is the gospel of Christ. And if you will obey that gospel, you will be born of water and of the Spirit, and you will be a Christian, sealed by the Spirit of God, and sanctified, and, and having a covenant with the living God, the everlasting God, and having a place reserved for you in heaven. And if you will continue in holiness, and walk in the power of that gospel, keeping yourself separated from sin, you will inherit the kingdom of the living God. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ.